I wouldn't be who I am today without you. <laughs> Too late! Too late! Hello everybody, Diz down here and well, we're back in Dream Daddy. Oh, Daddy. And now I have to see whether or not I'm going to have to play through again to get the other endings. But we've gotten the first two dates of everybody now. And I'm going for my hundas, my husband though. My, my, my man, my main, my main squeeze. Oh, oh, Damien, would you take me on this last date? Would you, please? You know what to say about third dates. It gets pretty serious. Sure this is your dream daddy? I'm sure. Oh, Damien, you're my dream daddy. So we went to the graveyard in the movie. We uh, went to his house for tea. Ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. Go on, nights, no, go on nighttime strolls pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through dad book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of his old signet rings to use as a seal for my letters, and I just couldn't say no. Hang out with that goth dad again? Please, Amanda, you know his name. And yes, be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him to our household, and that one time I've seen the Lost Boys, and I honestly would have preferred trying to see if he could have walked through the threshold of our home under his own power. Yes, Amanda. I have become Damien's familiar. I am compelled under his curse. I'm sorry, Aww. sweetie. Turn into a bat. I don't think... Aww. What's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? Well, okay, I'm off. Are you taking the car or are you flying off into the night on leathery wings of a bat? <laughs> One of those. While I'm out, you can throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die. That would be good. Yeah. I'm keeping it there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. <laughs> uh, going, going to the pier, I think this is. Uh, Damien and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape, I mean cloak. He hates it when people call it a cape. Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. This is going to seem like a silly question, but uh, why did Goths wear black? Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, so it would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning. Yeah. Interesting enough, though, that was that in the Victorian area, era, Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. I have another question. Oh. Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? Did you mention in the graveyard that it helps you appreciate your life or something? Mm. Uh, I've experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe that the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept death as a part of living. Mm. It's the single universal truth for every human who has ever lived. I am going to die. You are going to die. And life carries on without us. Fucking heavy, dude. Like, this is one of the reasons why I picked Damien is because I knew that it would un I, I, it would allow me to talk about a little bit about my philosophy of, like, existentialism nihilism where we're all fucked we're all gonna die there is literally no point to anything you do in your life except what if anything is gonna be said about you once you're gone by your friends by your family or if you become an evil dictator by the people who survive your reign um we talk about hitler in a negative connotation but if he was a, a person who was actively like trying to create a better world a utopia instead of whatever twisted thing he was we would be talking about him differently there would have been a completely different history it's one of those things where 
Everybody dies, but what you do does matter in the fact that it affects other people now and down the line. And you just got to try and choose the best thing for the world. Choose the best thing for everybody. Be nice to each other. Love each other. Don't be an asshole. And just be good. Because you're going to die and whether there's a heaven or hell, as long as there's still people on this earth, there's still going to be someone who remembers your name. Or at least knows you existed. Because I've got... Uh, book back at my mom's the family history from my mom's side of the family and it goes back to fucking the days of the Mayflower you know and so we're talking I've got at least somewhat you know it might be spotty but a decent written record of my lineage for generations and what we do now, if there's a lineage generations and generations from now, even if it's only nieces and nephews because you never have kids, like, at some point, someone's gonna have to, like, ask, okay, what was such and such relative like? And because of our current technology now and everything, they'll be able to go back and know what you were like. So don't be a dick. Leave a positive mark on this planet. All right, I'm gonna continue now. Doesn't that make you feel scared? I do fear death. Not at all. Without the advances of modern science, death was everywhere in the Victorian area. And yet, uh, funerals were more as, were a major social functions. Victorians were obsessed with the mementos of their loved ones, even going so far as to take elaborately staged photographs of their dead relatives. Oh. The mini... The mini Minute of their mourning was so complex that there were set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based upon who in your life in the past. Now, we don't have any of that. If you lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself because we have no modern equivalent of those formalities. We need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel that loss fully, but not allow us to consume us. So now, I am not afraid of death. I believe it is a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it. The time we have here is brief and fleeting, and occasionally cruel, but it is at all times precious. To stare death in the face and live despite that, I think, is a noble existence. Let's save the morning for the dead. Wow, that's, uh, beautiful. I can see the moonlight in the bay, glint off of Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn to the harbor and watch ships pass breathing in the salty sea air. I look to Damien again and can't help but be entranced by his charm, his mystery. I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean in closer to Damien, closing my eyes as I do so. I'm so sorry. I have to take this. Funeral march of a marionette. Thank you. Damien steps away from me to answer his phone. Oh no, I hope it isn't Lucian again. After speaking in hushed tones for a few moments, Damien returns to me. Everything okay? Ah! There's an emergency. Lucian? Oh. No, thankfully, but I must take my leave. Oh, okay. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Hmm. Dads do have to stick together, right? You know ah. it. Then come, there isn't time to waste. After a short drive in silence, we arrive in a rundown building on the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. Push surprisingly have any door open to find myself in a dimly, dimly lit waiting room. A few rickety chairs line the walls and there doesn't seem to be anyone behind the front desk. A few paintings and pictures on the walls, but they're so nondescript I'm still unsure what kind of place this is. Wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. Damien walks off down a corridor, his boots boot heels echoing through the halls of the seemingly empty, empty building. I see animal crates. This is a vet. Distant howls echo from some place I can't see and there's a faint scratching sound like claws on tile. Cautiously peek down in the hall and find stall after skull of scared looking dogs. All of them notice me or a few of them notice me and skitter up to the chain link fence sticking their noses through to sniff at the air. What have I gotten myself into? Suddenly the lights shut off. I panic. Unsure of where I am or how I can get out. I stumble through the darkness, my breathing getting heavier and heavier. Damien? Lights finally turn back on. 
Hey, sailor. Mary, what are you doing here? You aren't here for the fight club? I, uh... I don't want to get punched in the face. Ah. Great, because this is an animal shelter. Well, a what? Ah. We take care of stray animals and then people adopt the stray animals. Didn't you see the pets when you walked in? Um... Oh, I just, uh, sorry. I didn't really expect to see you volunteering at an animal shelter. Wow. Okay, kid. Way to put me in a box. Dames. You hear this baloney? Just one moment. Thunder cracks and a door bursts open. Appearing from the shadows, I see... Damien? Um, uh, hey. It's Damien. He looks completely different. No cloak, no Victorian area clothing, no makeup. I wasn't planning to share this side to me until much later, but I'm not as goth as you think. I, uh, I'm a systems administrator for the IT department of a, real, of a realty company. I wear tennis shoes to work and I listen to Bruce Springsteen. I enjoy going to the hardware store and looking at strange solutions. And I volunteer at this animal shelter in my spare time. I'm boring. I'm fascinated with the Victorian history and the goth lifestyle, that much is true. It's just not all that I am, and I need you to know that. Oh, I, uh... Mm. hate to kill the moment here, but there's some pressing business that needs to be attended oh, to. Oh, my. Oh, right. Is Duchess Cordelia? Again? Who's Duchess Cordelia? She's one of the pups. Gets out all the time. She somehow learned how to open doors, and now she's unstoppable. Mm. When did she get out? Ah. This morning. I went to go s sing sea shanties and to the cats when I came back. She had already bolted. I have to stay here with the pets, so I need you two to go to find her. Of course. Where could she be? Ah. She always ends up running off to the same places. Here, let me draw you a map. So I'm scribbling on the back of a pet adoption mm. form. She's very smart. Ruthless, even. You need to s stay on your toes and get her back before sundown, or else she turns into a werewolf and starts eating people. What? Your perfect little peach is down. Ah. We just don't want her to be stuck outside when it's cold. Oh. Ah. I'll grab some treats and we can eat the road. Damien and I look over the map Mary created for us. Oh man. I'm Nerd's house? Wow. Just fucking wow. Hmm. At least you're not. At least you're not other nerd's house. Looks like you're moving up in the pecking order. Other nerd's house. Mario Batali. Kale. Coffee Dad. Smalls. Dames. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Congrats, kiddo. Where should we head first? I'm a save because I don't know what's gonna happen here. I think we should go to the cul-de-sac. Because that's my guess. Damon and I exit the parking lot, start driving down toward town. I look over at him, and he seems concerned. Shouldn't be too hard to find Duchess, right? She's a pretty big pup. Mary wasn't kidding when she said that dog was smart. One time she correctly grasped the winner of the Kentucky Derby. It was a relatively great year for Bark Bark Bark. Hmm, I don't know. What do you think our odds are, this Don? Abandon hope. Uh, abandon all hope, ye who enter here? No, we gotta stay positive. Dad once told me, Diz Don, you can't shove raisins up your nose. And that hurt my feelings. I felt discouraged, but I kept a positive attitude. And you know what? I made it happen. Oof. It might have landed me in the ER and forced me to have ten golden raisins removed from my nasal cavity. But in that day, I learned that anything is possible if you have a good attitude and abnormally large nostrils. Young children are really, really are as resilient, I suppose. Haha, <laughs> yes, young children. I was 16. Let's just hope for the best. We got this. Alright. Back. Drive through the cold sack and everything seems pretty normal. Looks like Brian's doing some yard work. Pull into Brian's driveway and hop out. Hey, don't sip on the grass. I just mowed. Have you seen any uh, unusual activity in the area today? Uh -huh. 
aside from your under underwater lawn. Ooh, here we go. How dare you? I take my lawn care very seriously. This zone, please. You haven't seen a dog run through here, have you? Well, uh, a little while ago I heard Maxwell barking at something. When I came outside, my garden had been torn to shreds. It's gonna take, it's gonna take forever to retill the soil. Hmm, that could be a dog, or a rather, or a rather feisty raccoon. Whatever it was, must have been hungry. Eat all my tomatoes. I'm very sorry to hear about your garden. If you need assistance to restoring it to its former glory, please do not hesitate to contact me. Will do, buddy. Good luck in finding that dog. No. She's probably still hungry. I wonder if she's looking for more food elsewhere. More food. Food would be the aquarium. Jamie and I stop by the aquarium, living in this in here. Order here, but it might help to get out of the car and take a look. See anything? Hmm. No dog here, not even mm. any sign of her. Do you know the penguins are considered the ghosts of the sea? Damien, I want to believe you so badly. Okay, so it wasn't there. Uh, softball field. Drive to the softball field, and it looks like Craig's team is practicing. I wonder if any of the kids saw something. Craig's boxes and jogs over. Base, a softball bat slung over his shoulder. Hey, bros, what's up? Craig, uh, you wouldn't have happened to see a dog around here, have you? Well, an escape from the animal shelter, and we're trying to locate her. Hmm, I don't, I don't think so, but maybe one of the girls saw something. Girls! Hi, Amanda's dad. Hi, Lucien's dad. We have names. Girls, uh, have you seen any, uh, dogs around, bruh? There was a big dog here earlier. She ran off a while ago, though. I don't think she had an owner, but I really wanted to play. We tried to play fetch with her, but she just took the softball and ran. I think she ate it, actually. She was a lot of a dog. Mm -hmm. Here, took another softball. Might come and handle it, or... Many thanks, Craig. Many thanks, Craig. Okay, so... Went to the cul-de-sac, didn't find shit. Went to the softball field, got a ball. You can go Bayside. Drive back to the Bayside. Just like old times, eh? I remember it as if it were yesterday. I mean, uh, earlier today. So what do you think? Any side of the pooch? None yet, although who knows if she made it into any of these ships. Duchess would do that? I wouldn't put her past her to know how to navigate in rough seas without a compass. Very smart. Pops? Damien and I turned to see my daughter. Amanda, what are you doing here? Did you think I just stayed inside all day long, vegging on the couch and watching TV? Oh, sorry. What are you doing? I'm heading home to get to go veg out and on the couch and watch TV. Had to get a burrito first. <laughs> Young Miss, have you seen the dog around here? Oh, you bet. I saw a Pomeranian with a bow around his neck. I saw a big old Dolmarin named Henry that was, and there was a stroller full of Yorkies, a Greyhound, and a Golden Retriever. You seen a Mastiff anywhere? Mm hmm, no dice. But definitely have remembered oh. that. Gotta run though. This Rito has been ten, is, has about ten minutes before the cheese breaks down and the molecular structure of the tortilla and makes it all soggy. You understand. I do? <laughs> of course. Have a lovely evening, Miss Blaze. Here the hours are growing short. We must make haste if we are to find Duchess by sundown. Davian's looking more stressed out by the minute. I gotta think of something to lighten the mood. What kind of dog does a vampire have? I was imagining it would be unwise for a vampire to take up the company of a smaller mammal for the means of companionship. It would be too tempting to. A bloodhound. I was gonna say a bloodhound, Damien. Oh, yes, uh huh. Ah, oh, fuck. Load. This will be easy. No sweat. If I can wrangle a toddler who suddenly decides that she's a princess of the drywall and then spend three hours fishing a toddler out of a crawl space in our eye, Nick, I can find a dog. It was Amanda. Amanda did that. Let's just hope for the best. We got this. Park in front of Matt's coffee shop. Looks like it's a slow day. Matt's sitting behind the counter reading a book. Hey, Matt! Didn't, ex didn't expect to see you two today. What's up? Wow. Have you seen the stray dog around? Can't say I have. You looking for one? Uh, can you describe them to me? Enormous. Uh, That's pretty well that covers it. Cool. I find strange dogs digging for food scraps out in the alley back sometimes. I have to keep an eye out. You can go to the softball field again. 
Oh. And a new... Hmm. Hmm. Same conversation. Hmm. Oh. Okay, I'm going back to the coffee spoon with the ball. Hmm. Are you like finding that oh, dog? No. Fortunately, no. Still searching though, we're gonna find him. I'll give you guys a call if I see anything. Thanks, Matt. Okay, uh. Cul de sac. Drive through the cul de sac. Same conversation. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, no. Hours are growing short. I don't know how many. One. Gas are very capable, especially when one's looking for a dog. Damien smiles to himself. Keep reading Damien directions from the map as we drive around town. We haven't gotten to. Hmm. Like the shelter would be great. I'm back at Bayside. Hmm. the aquarium again? Hmm. Ah. Feel the night draws closer and closer with every passing breath. We must find Duchess soon. This is serious. Help you find her. Go back to the softball field? Looks like the game is in progress. Huh. Tracy me winning. Any sign of her? I don't think so. Wait, maybe. Never mind. It's just a kid taking a nap in the outfield. Back in the car. He said he'd do try the cul de sac. Seems like Brian has gone inside his garden, immaculate. Seriously, it looks so dang good. In like half an hour, I can't believe it. How does he do that? I can't do that. As the sun. Ah, the sun has set. My dear friend, I'm afraid this is what our night ends. Shit! Back to Coffee Poon. Guys, I think I may have seen what? that dog you were looking for. You did? A brown mastiff? Size of a house? Yeah. I saw it digging through the trash and back. It ran away to try to get closer though. You see what direction it ran in? Hey. It might have been running east, I think. The pup tore through three pans of grateful banana bread. I want to take some from the road, just in case. Sure thing. Thanks for the slice. The road slice. Grateful banana bread is going to be so good. I think she's meant to give it to the dog. Right, I mean, uh, it's gonna be so good for the doggy. I feel like we're on the right track. You think? If we keep this up, we'll find gestures in no time. Hey, if you like dogs so much, why don't you have any? Lucy is severely allergic. I wouldn't put him through that. But there are still dogs in my life, so I'm, for that I'm very grateful. Put me one more dog in your life, buddy. Splendid attitude. Let's not waste any more time. Verily. All right, and auto saves east would be back in the cul-de-sac or bayside. So I'm gonna try cul-de-sac. Except, uh oh, Hugo's front door is wide open. She can open doors. Mm. This is classic Duchess Cordelia. A Delta is sign. We should approach with caution. Whatever goes down in there, I've got your back. Creep up on the porch and step inside. There, sitting in the center of Hugo's living room, like she owns the damn place, is one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. <laughs> Boof! Well, she hasn't broken anything in here. Yet. Mm. Wonderful. Now all we have to do is get the leash on there before she tries to escape again. Now, get out of here before Hugo comes home. Easy peasy. Duchess, come here. Duchess eyes Damien warily. As he approaches, she begins to growl. <laughs> She's on her guard. We'll need another plan. I reach into my pockets and pull out the slice of grateful banana bread Matt gave me. Just a sniff the air and hones in on the bread. Come here, girl. Nice and easy. <laughs> Got some yummy homemade, vegan, and possibly gluten-free banana bread. If that's what you're into. Duchess cautiously approaches me and gives the bread a good sniff before gently taking it from my hand and dropping it on the ground, like a dog always do for some reason. Curls up and starts munching on the bread. Success! Damien walks up behind Duchess and attaches the leash to her collar. She immediately notices and starts whining. It's time to go home now, Duchess. 
Damien gives the tug on the leash. She won't move. Duchess, what happened to your to our rapport? You and I used to be bosom buddies. She still doesn't move. She's huge. There's no way we could even try to lift her. Well, this is a weird situation to be in. I think we're literally trash bagging in our friend's house with this large dog. What are you nards doing? Arna stands in the doorway with a plate of pizza rolls. What flavor pizza rolls are those? Oh, pepperoni blast? Nice. They just notice there's Ernest and fumbling on against the leash. Why is this dog in my house? It's a long... Duchess suddenly breaks free of Damien's grips and hurdles towards Ernest. Ah! Ernest and Duchess fall on the ground. Pizza rolls fly everywhere. This is bad. Ernest, are you okay? Ernest feeds Duchess pizza roll. Hey, she likes pizza rolls. Ernest sits up, but the dog keeps licking his face. Oh, uh, hey. Hugo stands at the door, looking like he's at a loss Sweet for words. Manchego. What's, uh, why are you guys, uh, whose dog is this? It's a long story, but it involves a large dog who knows how to open doors. Morph. Hugo, may I present you Duchess Cordelia? Hmm. How do you do? Morph. <laughs> We're friends. Duchess looks in his face. She's from the local animal shelter. She got out and we've been chasing her around all around town. Your house was her final stop. Dog, can we keep her? <sighs> Ernest, I don't know if we're set up to take care uh, of a... Wait, did you just call me Dad? Come on, please. Look how cute she is. Oh. Hugo sighs. We had been talking about adopting a dog for a while. Um, but you have to promise that you'll take care of her. Yeah, I'll give her all the pizza rolls her little heart desires. I suddenly remember what's on the back of this map and pull out a pen a pen out of my pocket. Got the forms ready for you, if you're interested. I'll leave in the way of the adoption fee, since you know we technically broke into your household. <laughs> ah. Well, alright, it's a deal. Here goes stops steps onto the porch with it with us and signs the form while Ernest plays with Duchess inside. You sure seem to be happy with a new oh. friend. I know. He called me dad. Can you believe it? Damien places a hand on Hugo's shoulder. I certainly can. I think this would be really good for Ernest. It should teach him some responsibility. You should probably look into getting better locks at your doors, though. <laughs> the Duchess is a wild one. But do her, do right by her and she'll love you too forever. Thank you. Thank you. And long story short, the Duchess now lives in a happy home and neither of us were charged for breaking and entering. <laughs> so, all in all, I think it was a fine day's work. Nice work, you two. Ah. It is done. Could you be a valuable? You could be a valuable asset to our team of volunteers. You know, if you ever feel like petting some puppies, hit me up. Mary, I always feel like petting puppies. Ah. Good to know. Well, I'll catch you fellows later. Mary starts to leave. And one last thing. Ah. Damien's been telling me all about you. Glad he finally brought you around. Oh yeah. Ah. Damien's my special boy. I love him. We go way back and I got a vested interest in his health, success, and well-being. If you ever heard him, Mary, you can fill in the blanks. I go. Yes, ma'am. Mary, leave me alone with Damien. So, uh, about the whole uh, ghost thing. I am completely understand if you aren't interested in me anymore. What? Am I missing something here? I'm not a cool goth prince. I'm boring. I own five pairs of tennis shoes. I wear dumb glasses. Don't you care? You look so nervous. Damien, do you really think I only like you because of all the goth stuff? That's all cool, but the best thing about you is how passionate you are about the things you love. History, art, Victorian fashion, dogs, storage solutions. It doesn't matter what it is. You care, and that's awesome. I sound like I'm Undyne speaking to Alphys right now. Holy shit. I just realized that I'm Undyne speaking to Alphys. It doesn't matter what it is. You care, and that's awesome. Fuck, they stole from Undertale. And also, the glasses are very cute. Yep. Totally fucking ripping off Undertale right here. How'd I know? How fucking Alphys? God damn it. <sighs> fucking. Uh, you don't think I'm boring at all? If you're boring, then I don't know what that makes me. 
I spend too much time online shopping for flashlights. I get excited to mow my lawn on Saturdays. I get cranky about commercials being too loud. I've even been thinking about mo making my own peanut butter. Huh. Then maybe we can be boring together? It would never be boring if it was with you. Damien suddenly closes the gap between us and pulls, us and pulls me into a hug, buries his face into my shoulder. His hair smells like lavender and rosemary. I was so scared you wouldn't have liked me. Quite the opposite. Damien pulls away for a second and looks me in the eyes. Without, his, without the colored contacts, his eyes are so dark and soulful. Oh. May I kiss you? Thou art welcome. Verily. You may take upon yourself the... You know what? Just kiss me. Smiles slightly and leans in, giving me a gentle kiss. Damien pulls away and gives me an intense look. Do you uh, want to... Help me take care of the puppies? Yes. Damien and I arrive back at the cul-de-sac, our fingers intertwined. Like a proper mad gentleman, he walks me to my doorstep. This was uh, lovely. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for everything. I'm very happy I could be myself around you. I'm glad, but I have one request. What's that? Can we keep sending each other's letters? But of course. Damien kisses me one last time before turning around and heading home. Amanda runs back to the couch from the window and tries to look as nonchalant as possible. Hello, Father. I was just sitting here on the couch the entire time. Hi, Amanda. So, um, are you guys, like, um, uh, starting a vampire coven together? Oh, plot twist. Mothman, Damien's actually Mothman. I didn't see it coming either. Genius. Well, whatever's happening, I'm really glad you two are happy. You deserve it, Dad. Aw, shucks. I'm gonna head to bed. Catch you in the morning? Sure thing. I make my way to my room and fall into bed with my heart full, excited for the days to come. So how to do, how to do, how to do. How to do, how to do, how to do. My <clears throat> dear friend, you've simply taken the egg on this one. Um, t taken the egg is a, uh, it's a... <clears throat> Well, it's a, it's a Victorian phrase. We, we've gotten Technically to the means winning, so uh, you've ultimately you've you've won. Oh, really? I've ultimately won. Okay, well, we'll see what this ending is then, because I completed an interview with a vampire. Let's see how this is. It's not gonna send me back to the you've got dads. Phew, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Diz Don, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy? Rats. <sighs> Sorry, sweetie, it's the Fed. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but every, even I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. Uh, government. Well, if they think they're going to take me alive, they got another thing coming! I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise Aww. for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're pretty bad at lying. <laughs> Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under the tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but ah, Dad, you! I dramatically whip up the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! Figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. DVD box set of long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons, and bonus material including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. Give me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pig skin or something? Totally. Follow Amanda to the back door. Oh. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. To consider this your graduation party with all these hot dads. Surprise! 
Dad, everyone's here! Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is, fully customizable, but down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Yeah. I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, alright? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. God, I wish I could be as good of a dad as Dad Don. I don't even have any kids yet, though. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. She should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Diz Don, my dude. Pablo, how's the shirt business going? My bud, I got men's shirts, I got women's shirts, I got tank tops in a variety of sizes, I got shapes and colors. Each one of them of fine quality, screen printed with the logo and visage of world renowned witch house outfit, they can fail. Purchasable at most respectable retailers, but more specifically, out of the trunk of my car. I'm also selling my mom's world face miss homemade apple butter. Never stop hustling, Pablo. Never stop hustling. Baby, you got it. Ugh. It's almost like I'm fucking cutting onions because my eyes sting. I accidentally rubbed my eyes where I was eating the jalapeno chips watching the Nerdy Show stream team. And I fucking felt like I maced myself because my eyes were like burning. I'm just like, God damn it! I must have still had some of that fucking dust on my fingers from the fucking jalapenos. Walk over to Mary who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. We have real fluffy sim Samoyed now. His name... His name's Harold. Loves belly rubs. He always tries to lick your face if you get too close. This is Christensen. Thank you so much for telling me in great detail about every single dog currently at the animal shelter. Please tell me about the Afghan with three legs again. Sure. Quadro, we call him. It's one of those ironic nicknames. You know, if you're really interested, I could probably steal one for you. Really? Nah, but I could get you in to meet all of them. We always could use an extra hands around the shelter. And if those extra hands also helped in the seal dog... Ah, fuck. Fine, I'll try and read without my glasses. Glad you two are able to bond over cute dogs. Really warm my heart. Dad, we're having a moment. Hey, hey sailor. Your kid's a good egg. Where's your goth prince? You two are usually attached to the hip these days. Making my rounds. He's, uh, he's around. Stellar. Mary turns her attention to Amanda. It's not too hard to sneak a dog into college. Trust me, I did it plenty back in the day. At one point, I had three cats living in my dorm. Ugh. Ah, my eyes are burning. Late effect fucking macing myself with fucking jalapeno chips, I swear. It's either that or else this is actually getting to me. All of a sudden, a huge dog leaps up into my arms. Duchess! He's gonna owners run up to me. The Duchess gives me a, gives my face a few broad licks and hops down. We're, um, we're working on that. Got her in disciplinary class. She's a wild spirit. Where, who runs the worship, eh? I don't mind at all. <laughs> Looks like the three of you are getting along nicely. Ah. She's a valuable addition to the clan. If I hold my home... If I hold up my homework in front of her, she'll eat it. Cool. Hmm. We'll deal with that later. Duchess Cordelia spots a squirrel and darts across the yard. Ernest follows her laughing. He's actually been a lot more manageable lately. I think taking care of the dog is good for him. Thanks for breaking into my house, I guess. Oh. Everything works out. Sorry I couldn't be with you, Hugo. Man. Boy, says Tis done. Brian, you made it. Huh, I don't pass up on your Mac. What did you think of the party? Uh, it's not too bad. Just not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you. For the love of the compliment. Sure thing, pal. Say, let me know if you ever want to head out to the lake. I'd be happy to pull you out of the drink again. Deep breaths. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? <laughs> this is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro. This is real Regger. Taking our old 
taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on you until on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Let's hit the gym sometime soon, huh? Sure thing, dude. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces? Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh boy. I'll uh, let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, eh? Totally. Tell Maddie congrats for us. It looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep. Couldn't ask for a better cold sack. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. I'm sure the kids would love to see your dance moves again. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could uh, hang out or something? Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. Well, see you later. Here he comes up to me with a plate hey. of mac and cheese. The perfect the perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Dizdan. Thanks, Hugo. I learned from the best. I got a packet full of gift cards that say you already knew that thing or two. Let's get, what, let's get together for, tri for trivia night again sometime soon, huh? You know it. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it all around for the finals. Me too. That scholarship money will re really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see you. <laughs> Amanda, it comes to add a year old teacher. Hey. Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Haha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power hey. over me. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break everything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Oh. Nope. Oh. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... <laughs> She'll fit into college just fine. Hey. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack mm -hmm. table. Good stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. See you later. Hey. hey, man. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I have a fresh batch of grateful, be grateful banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Have you gotten that oregano smell out of your upholstery yet? <laughs> Still working on it. Hey, Amanda's dad? Turn to spot Lucian walking up to me. Yes, Lucian? Thanks for inviting me to your party. Anytime, bud. I know we had a rocky start, but I'm glad to know you. I hope you know how much your dad cares about you. Um, yeah. My dad's had a rough couple of years, and I know it must have not have been easy to raise me alone. He's kind of a weird guy, but I love him a lot. And it seems like you make him happy. So, uh, you're cool in my book. Thank you, Lucian. That means a lot to me. Sure. And let me know if you want to, want me to give you a stick and poke me sometimes. And poke... Uh, you want me to give you a stick and poke sometime. Also, I'm sorry about the oregano thing. Thanks for coming by, Lucian. Stay around, does Don. Party starts to wind down. I take a seat on the back porch step. Sun is setting and everyone seems to have had their fill. Man wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops! What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. <laughs> I can fucking do this. I can do this. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you weren't my only friend. I was really scared of going to college being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. <laughs> Too late! Too late! Don't cry, don't cry, I swear to God. Just don't if you cry again. Too late! I'm glad I took my glasses off! Uh, 
You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. <laughs> I already was. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a frame picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking all our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? Figured we need at least one together before I leave. <sighs> Amanda. Thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm excited to see what the, full, the future holds for you. Oh, my wife was right. I'm going to be just a complete weepy mess when we have kids all day, every day. <laughs> uh, knock him dead, kid. I always do. Oh, my eyes. Oh, ruin every shirt. Man down and I share a hug. This is only beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories of stuff. Memories to make and stuff to break, oh. right? Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff, intentionally or unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for more of it. World's best dad. <laughs> I got both endings I wanted. I think. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. Ah, uh, Damien is sitting on a bench beneath the cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and Emma's are going to go get ice cream. Love you, Pops. Wait, she's talking to the Emma's again? Oh, well, I guess maybe they must have made amends. Runs off to join her friends. Take a seat next to Damien as guests, last guests make their way out of the party. Did you know that the Victorian era would troll the bench's city boys? What? Really? I'm kidding, this don't. But what if? It's good to see you uh, in your civvies again. Thank you. I had a revelation the other day, this don't, and I think it was largely due to your continued influence upon me. That I was a virgin of myself, it might have been embarrassed to show you my true form, my information technology form. But what you said about me, about my passion, was what you truly admired. That emboldened me to feel like myself regardless of how I choose to dress and act. Instead of separate identities, they are simply different facets of myself. A three-dimensional human being with his own thoughts, wants, and needs. And that is why I love this game. Fucking morals and stories and actual decent writing, even though some of the spelling and punctuation gets fucked up. And also weird glitches where I, when I reload saves. I love dressing the way that I do, but feeling constricted by what I thought was my own personal brand made me lose sight of why I did it in the first place, to make myself happy. I place my hand, I, I place my hand on Damien's and feel light squeeze. Looking up, I'm greeted by Damien's warm smile. <laughs> I'm trying to be more comfortable with who I am rather than dwelling on who I could be to other people. Can't stop smiling. I'm so proud of him. Damien, I'm so happy you've realized that you can be a dog-loving goth. Me too, Dizdon. Me too. I feel myself inching closer and closer to Damien. I go brush a lock of hair off his face and I'm shocked at how soft it is. Wow, how, how is your hair so soft? Dog shampoo. I keep running my hands through his hair and he leans closer to me. Placing a hand on the side of my face, he strokes my cheek with his thumb. You know, public displays of affection were considered scandalous in the Victorian era. Damien pulls me in for a kiss, but I think I can make an exception for you. Aww. Plenty of carbs the night before a big game. So. This is the uh, created by Leighton Gray and Vernon Shaw. Tyler J. Hutchinson is uh, the design. Aaron and Brent, uh, Jory Greshens, Craig Bathy, Eric, and I'm going to be uh, Eric Ishe, Brian Cramper, Ray, Aaron Hansen, Aaron, Aaron, Brian, Dan, Susie, Nathaniel, Leighton, and Vernon. Good job on the writing, guys. Story conclude consultation, art direction, Leighton Gray. 
Like the whole team, like you guys, you did fucking great, guys. Um, every last one of you, because you don't really like. That's why, like, I'm. I usually don't take in my gameplays time to like look at and thank the. Uh, people who made the game even if it like i, I kind of did a little like I, I did a little bit in the games but i didn't like go and name names a lot but this is a game that was basically made by a crew of people in and around the game grumps and it's simply because It's just, you know, it's so nice to see a game come out of the run of people who actually have been doing Let's Plays for a long time. Like, it proves that, you know, if, like, Markiplier, like, PewDiePie was in, had a bit of work that he did or uh, publicity at least that he gave to uh, YouTubers life but um, this is the first game that's actually like full story driven like dating simulation thing and it's it's great also <sighs> there you go fucking Damien but this has been a trip I will be back um, I will skip if I can find a way, I will either skip ahead to just endings or something, but we're going to finish all the endings for the good endings, as in we're going to get all the good endings for all of the other six guys. Um, I will probably edit out um, or skip past parts of the party and stuff, um, but we're going to do them. Um, I might start a new game just to try and get a couple of like bonus scenes that I know about now. But other than that, like I probably will be done with this after I get all six other endings. So thank you guys. I've been enjoying this game and I'm going to be continuing to enjoy this game for a little bit longer. So thank you guys for watching. This has been is Don playing Dream Daddy. Oh, Daddy. And now we finished Damien's run. So, like, comment, and subscribe below. I'll catch you in the next one. I gotta go blow my nose because I'm a weepy, sobby mess thinking about being a good dad and all that. So, you know, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Thank you, guys.